other people can have their holidays. No, but, but Christmas is Christmas. I want to see Merry Christmas. Remember the expression, Merry Christmas? You don't see it anymore. You're going to see it if I get elected, I can tell you right now. Merry Christmas. That was Donald Trump in 2015 doing what he does, parroting someone else's slogan or grievance to just promote himself. Ronald Reagan's campaign slogan was, Make America Great Again. Drain the Swamp dates back to the liberal Wisconsin politician Winfield Gaylord, who said socialists wanted to drain the swamp. And claims of a war on Christmas have been ricocheting around Fox News for many years, but Fox is just one more stop in a long chain of custody that gets uglier the farther back you go. Because the first rumblings about a war on Christmas stem back to the fringe John Birch Society and anti-Semitic pamphlets from the 1920s called The International Jew, The World's Foremost Problem. The cliché that we must know our history to avoid repeating it certainly applies here. The nicest thing you can hope for with today's war on Christmas crowd is that they're ignorant of the dark road they've wandered down. President Trump, though, is now declaring this particular war over. People are saying they're proud to be saying Merry Christmas again. He writes, I'm proud to have led the charge against the assault of our cherished and beautiful phrase, Merry Christmas. And Fox News cheered this victory right on cue. Trump just hasn't put Christ back in Christmas, but he has also put prayer back into the White House. He's put justice back into and religious freedom back into our courts. He's done so much. That is Fox News basically thanking Trump for winning a long running rhetorical war that at best is an ignorant misunderstanding. And to be clear, at worst is a nod to decades of anti-Semitic hate. But this is a season of thanks. And that thank you was apparently not enough for Donald Trump, a president who rebuked U.S. basketball players for not thanking him sufficiently for their release from China, who was reportedly angry with his Supreme Court nominee for insufficient gratitude for his lifetime appointment, and who bizarrely resorted, remember this, to thanking himself in the third person for macroeconomic trends, tweeting famously, quote, thanks, Donald. You'll notice Donald Trump showing a real deep neediness for those thank yous. It kind of reminds me of the emotional rapper Drake, who said, you could thank me now, go ahead, thank me later. Yeah, I know what I said, but later doesn't always come, so instead it's okay, you could thank me now. Now, of course, in that song, the point is that Drake desperately needs gratitude so that he feels recognized, and because the future's uncertain, he wants to be thanked right now. Does Trump need these thank yous that badly? Well. A political action committee aligned with Trump is, get this, this is for real. They are spending a million dollars to blanket the airwaves with this bizarre ad thanking Trump for, among other things, restoring Christmas. Thank you, President Trump, for letting us say Merry Christmas again. Maybe Donald Trump really does need those thank yous. Maybe without that effusive purchased praise, he gets emotional or hurt or even offended. And maybe that's how he's really defending Christmas, embracing the season by being the biggest snowflake in America. Back with me is Jason Johnson and David Frum. Uh, David, how does this whole thing work and why won't it go away? Well, look, I'm, I'm a double target in um the war on Christmas, because not only am I Jewish and not a Christian and not an observer of the Christmas holiday, but I grew up in Canada where people are as likely to say Happy Christmas as Merry Christmas. So, so it's a two front war. Um, your point about the president's need for uh, congratulations um, is very powerful. I, the ugliest manifestation of that is what the president tweeted after the terrible slaughter in the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, where um, the, the president took, gave, him, gave himself a pat on the bat and, and said he appreciated all the congratulations he was getting from people um, after that terrible, terrible slaughter. Um, there, is, uh, there is something terribly wrong with him. And in this case, I, I think it's not just a psychological need. It is, as you said, um, a, a political awareness that he rules by dividing by insinuating that um, some of his predecessors, like President Obama, maybe they were not as imbued with the Christmas spirit as he is. And he also works by, um, qu quoting the, the woman on, on Fox News, by suggesting that he, probably the least religious president of the 20th century, of the 20th and 21st century, is somehow a paladin of Christian faith. Uh, Jason? 
look, it's, it's to go back to that brilliant philosopher and sage Drake, Trump's always been on his worst behavior. And he knows the public doesn't love him. And so his obsession with Christmas and having people praise him is based on the fact that with a 39 percent approval rating and dropping approval ratings even amongst his core people, he knows that not only is he going to only get coal in his stocking, but he also recognizes that he doesn't have much to show for it. So he's got to say, hey, I've saved this. I fixed that. I saved Christmas. He's got to go to war with something and somebody because that's the only way that he can get people to appreciate him. And, and I'll be honest, you know, I, I think a better holiday for Trump would be Festivus. I mean, Rand Paul has been airing grievances for the last couple years, I think Trump would be much better with that holiday because he doesn't have the Christmas spirit in his heart. Well, and David, I'm going to play now more from this ad, and you uh, have been a, a really useful, a, a tonic and an arbiter uh, in this era of what is worth getting upset about and how much. Uh, this ad strikes me as both bizarre and thus in a certain way laughable uh, that they're spending a million dollars on it to say thank you, but also cuts to a larger political strategy and what some have called this uh, authoritarian or strongman right. instinct to get the whole party and then the culture and then the country uh, reshaped in this Trumpian image. Here is this ineffable ad. Thank you, President Trump. Thank you, President Trump. Thank you. Everyday Americans are standing up to thank President Trump. Thank you so much. For sir. making America great again. Thank you for cutting my taxes. Thank you for fixing our economy. Thank you for keeping my family safe. Thank you for putting America first. Thank you for supporting Israel. As veterans, thank you for reminding us to stand for our national anthem. Thank you, President Trump. Thank you, President Trump, for letting us say Merry Christmas again. Now, David, before you answer, I'm going to now replay the ad just five more times. Is that okay with everyone at home? <laughs> uh, your thoughts on this ad? Well, my ears, of course, went up when the woman with the mouth of the Hudson accent um, thanked the president for supporting Israel. And I, that when I first saw this ad, I, I noted that. Um, the, the message to American Jews in this ad is, hey, we're not talking about you. It's somebody else. And one of the things, you, you opened by talking about the anti-Semitic origins of this. One of the mm -hmm. things that is sort of uncomfortable for uh, um, American Jews and, um, in the Trump campaign is, what if, some, what if you had a president who used racial provocation and didn't put Jews at the head of the list? I mean, normally Jews expect to be there. What if you said, no, no, we're leaving you out. It's other people we're going after. Um, where do you as a community fit in, and how do you, how do you respond to that? And that's really a, ch a challenging thing, and I think it's a little bit of a test for American Jews to say, this time we're not included in what is inten intended to be divisive. Are we going to volunteer anyway? Well, you, you remind me of something I saw at a church uh, recently in Seattle, uh, Jason, uh, what David says, which was, a Bible verse that said, you shall love the stranger, um, which, is a, which is a line Jews and Christians know, but it said, you shall love the stranger, uh, and then in parentheses afterward, it put the words Muslim, uh, with the idea right. that, that that's one, and again, we're, you know, people can inter interpret scripture however they want. This was one church's way of saying, the stranger right now, the groups that are marginalized right now in the American political context, uh, the, the, the groups may change, but the notion that you shall love and take care of strangers, uh, if you want to get into a, a notion of acceptance and religion, would seem to be important, and yet it is this uh, leaning on a version of, of religion and divisiveness that Trump is clearly using to divide. Well, and, and it can go even further. This whole idea that during a season of giving, during a season that is supposed to be about uh, the perverse birth of a very important religious figure, um, that a conservative political action committee would create an ad praising the president, honoring and praising the president during a time of year where the focus is supposed to be on the least of these. I'm pretty sure that you're not going to have people from Flint and Puerto Rico uh, praising President Trump. But I, I completely agree with you also. This idea of othering people, mm -hmm. because the whole idea that there was a war on Christmas suggests that there was somebody in America, large groups of people who aren't American enough, who somehow want to take something away. And I'll be honest with you, the most, most people that I happen to know, and you look at polls across the country, you look at any Walmart on a, a Friday night, Saturday night, 
night. Lots of people celebrate Christmas, whether or not they're religious or not. Mm -hmm. uh, so the idea of that war was just something else the president created and promoted, even though it was started at Fox News, to divide the American people. Yeah, and that's uh, really, to, to bring it full circle, that goes to informing uh, friends and neighbors and people. Uh, there may be plenty of people who have no idea that this seemingly overblown, quote unquote, war um, hails from the roots of anti-Semitism right. in the United States. And then it's, it's hey, it's Christmas spirit. It's time to uh, talk to each other, listen to each other, um, but share, share that so people know what they're quoting. Right. Uh, Jason Johnson and David from. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.